the legislation that uh, in Congress created these medals. So now we can have the presentation and I want to start out in presenting this medal to you, what it really means and what it behind. Service that you've given, this is in behalf of all mankind, not just all Americans, because of what you've done for people who have persecuted and oppressed throughout the whole world. Your courage over the years nine years of imprisonment on false charges and still retain your poise and your strength to, to do that. Thank you very much, dear President. I know you are finishing your eight years and when you retire you'll probably be writing memoirs as all of us do and you'll be thinking about the past and if you have some sad moments Think about my happy family and think about thousands and thousands of people who were praying in Soviet camps, who were praying and asking for the God to give you help, uh, strength and stubbornness and insistence uh, to you, to you, Mr. Schultz, to American people in the struggle for their rights and who be, are free today, not because of some goodwill of Soviet leaders, but because of their struggle and your struggle. And you, President elect, dear George, please think about those thousands and thousands who are still there and who are praying now for you in order you will be as stubborn, and we are sure you will be stubborn, as firm in struggling for defending human rights in the Soviet Union. And of course, all your record in Soviet Jewry and Ethiopian Jewry and other things convinces us that you will continue that fantastically good record of human rights which President Reagan, Secretary of State Schultz, and American congressman had and made possible our freedom and freedom of our brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Yeah. And now, if you will present to your wife okay. this, also this medal, and we know about the work that she was doing and all during those years when we were there. Uh, Mr. Sharansky and Mrs. Sharansky are Israeli citizens now, due to their immigration to Israel. There's medal to you. Thank you very much. She, she of her, all her struggle was successful only because of the strong support of Israel, of America, of all the world, and because White House, together with Congress, turned to headquarters of her struggle. And that's why it was so successful in bringing freedom to me and to many other people. Thank you. Mr. President, what about the American hostages? We just, just one minute here. We would like to have the family come in and join us, his mother. His brother, his cousin, who is here from Moscow, and Mrs. Gilman. Let's see how you. I called the customs in his own permission. You already looked on the back. You already looked on the back. Do you think customs will permit him to take it to Israel? <laughs> By order of Congress, those are solid gold. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, I think now we should all... Mr. President, if you have a second, what about the uh, American hostages in Lebanon? Do you think there's any chance that they may be released as you're leaving office? We can only pray and continue what we've been, we've been exploring every channel possible for their release and their... They've never been out of my mind uh, since they were so unfairly seized. And Any sign that they may be prepared to do what they did eight years ago? Let them go as Mr. I don't hazard any speculation on that. 
just it's a great tragedy. We hope that it can be resolved. What's your speech like tonight? Is it all a personal farewell or are you gonna attack everybody? Yeah, I don't think so. Just trying to So then they can finish yeah. having a conversation with the American people. What's your best advice to George Bush? <laughs> Keep on doing what he just did. Get out of the room first. Do you think, do you think he should go to Hirohito's funeral and do a Pearl Harbor and all of the horror of World War II? I think the friendship that has been created since took people on both sides to now have as some of our staunchest allies and friends, erstwhile enemies, and yes, I think he should. assumptions and going around the table uh, barrel sprinkle got off rather lightly <laughs> uh, there was a general agreement which would be a little frightening among the commons <laughs> I think that generally uh, there was agreement about the assumptions we had a discussion about the trade deficit uh, which was led by Arthur Laffer uh, the net of that I would say was the general assessment that the trade deficit uh, is not an economic problem. Uh, but I would say is that uh, just the note of history it was back on uh, November 16th, uh, 1980. Uh, you convened this group in uh, Los Angeles for the first time. And generally, we don't like to go back and read uh, what you said 10 years ago uh, because you get in a lot of trouble. In this case, the group that was convened was under the leadership of uh, George Schultz. And most or many of the people in that original group have gone on. Walker, Harry Wittenbaum, Cap Weinberger, Arthur Burns, George Schultz, and myself. It's just interesting to note that we started out by saying there was a need for a very sharp change in economic principles. Uh, we went into the necessity of convincing the public that your policy on inflation was real and not rhetoric. We talked about tax policy. <laughs> Hey, Susan. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, folks. I've always wanted to stand on the counter with the table. <laughs> so, is it okay with you, Mr. President? <laughs>
stress is coming in for some reason. <laughs> Mr. President, you have heard from all of us how honored we are to have served in your cabinet and to be associated in some way with all of the things that have happened that have done so much for our country and for stability throughout the world. And we thought you probably were tired of hearing us say that, and you're wondering, could there be something a little more tangible connected with it? <laughs> so we all got together and chipped in and uh, purchased this chair that has on the back of it the president. <laughs> and so I now want to ask the person with the most continuous seniority in office to do the honors. Sam? Yes, indeed. Well, Mr. President, as the last of the Mohicans, <laughs> the last of your original cabinet members, I have the privilege and pleasure of presenting you with this chair on behalf of each and every member of your cabinet. And when you're out in California, relaxing in this chair, <laughs> you should be very happy because as American history is written, it will certainly say that this administration was one of the greatest in the history of this country, and you indeed one of its greatest presidents. Sam, thank Good you. Chair, sir. Thank you. Thank you. you and thank you all very much but look let me state for the record one of the things that you spoke about couldn't have happened if all of you hadn't been here making them happen and I'm grateful to all of you and with regard to relaxing in California in this chair isn't that what they said I did in the cabinet <laughs> <laughs> Well, my advice, Mr. President, when you get out to California, don't take a chair. Insist on a couch. <laughs> no, a saddle. <laughs> well, I thank you very much. I have a feeling this might find its way into a certain library. Did you ever doze off of that chair, sir? <laughs> no. I <laughs> thought of that. I've heard the story. Maybe we should ask the other people. <laughs> no. no. Of course, no comment. No. 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 As a matter of fact, that you were going to eliminate when you came into office. That what? You were going to eliminate half this government when you came into office. Well, there are some things that are no longer there, and there have been some tightening up in the line of adopting modern business practices that I think have um, made quite considerable changes that are not usually seen because they're in the form of kind of administrative changes in government. Do you still think government is the problem? Yes, always has been. Not the solution? Uh, uh, this country was meant to be, uh, well, we the people. The people told uh, the government what it could do in the Constitution. It's the only Constitution. Well, there was one other Constitution, which is something like that in the world, I found out. But it's the only one that uh, really says that. All those other constitutions are documents in which the governments tell the people what they can do. Sir, if you had a chance to have four more years, would you take it? And what would you have done? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good question. You know, if it took four more, I might have been willing if it took four more years to get line item veto. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I'll continue to work for that. Oh, I, the law is very explicit about this, and uh, I, so it's a, it's a bittersweet party because saying goodbye to all these people that have really worked together side by side, is, that's the bitter part. 
sweetheart is here in California, here I come. What are you going to miss the least about this place? What? What will you miss the least about this place? Don't say it. do certain things because of the uh, security necessities. Like what? What? Like what? Well, maybe I'm the first president that's never been able to go to an Army-Navy game. Nobody wants to run 75,000 people through a magnetometer. <laughs> what are you going to do when you go back to California? What? what? When you go back to California, what will you be doing right off the bat? I'm not retired. I think there are things to do and things in which, as a citizen, it would be helpful in arousing the attention of the people to impress some needs on Congress to get done. But now to show you, I don't know, it could have been another answer to your question there about the Chief of Staff has just told me I've got another appointment. February 24th of last year, we launched the Export Now initiative to focus attention on new international market for U.S. products and to increase awareness among small and medium-sized businesses of the profit potential in exports. Your efforts have helped us attack a critical concern in our nation, our trade deficit. All your hard work and energy remind me of a story that happened to Abe Lincoln. Once when Lincoln was in the War Department, a military officer who was in a big hurry bumped into the president. And when the officer realized who it was, he offered 10,000 pardons. One's enough, smiled Lincoln. I wish the whole army would charge like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of you have led the charge, and our trade numbers attest to the effectiveness of your efforts. During the past 10 months, we have witnessed the highest monthly export value ever recorded, $28 billion in September. And our trade deficit was reduced to almost 20% in 1988, or almost $35 billion less than 1937. The fine work of this advisory committee demonstrates the gains that can be achieved when we roll up our sleeves and get to work. Your grassroots approach is working, at every level, the American people have caught the export now spirit. They too recognize the vital importance that exports hold, not only for our country on the whole and its economic future, but for the local cities and states. For every $1 billion in U.S. exports, we create approximately 25,000 new jobs for American workers. 
and exporting is not just for the large multinational companies. Our Export Now program has motivated small and medium-sized firms to consider the world marketplace. Our nation's position is changing in the world marketplace, and with it, our private sector is meeting new challenges. Your Export Now team has helped these American businesses meet the challenges. I applaud you and the rest of our team for helping create for our nation an export climate of confidence. We have now established a sound foundation on which America's future may grow and prosper. As Will Rogers once said, actual knowledge of the future was never lower, but hope was never higher. Confidence, he said, will beat predictions anytime. So before I segue into telling you about my operation, <laughs> I better just say thank you all and God bless you. aren't as important to you as action. And this group has really performed. I don't think you or I would have ever conceived that they could have gotten over 8,000 new businesses, small and medium, exporting. That's what's happened as a result of this group. And it's not just any section of the country, it's throughout the country. The point I'd like to make, Mr. President, is you and I have been working a long time on private sector initiatives and public-private partnerships. This is the essence of it. When you have government working with the private sector to make things happen that you want and the country needs. This little report will tell you that that's what's happened and we thank you for the leadership that you've given us and the inspiration. All that's been happened is the result of what you have established in the way of the mood of this country, the vision for this country, and this partnership is the expression of what can be done when you put the government and the private sector together. So we give you this with great pride and accomplishment, and thank you for the leadership you've given us. Well, thank, thank you, and I look forward to, to having this, and I thank all of you, again, for all that you've done, and, it's really sizable. I'm just sorry that uh, some of those things don't get as much attention in the press as my supposed naps in the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> the river on the surface of the water. The next day the press would print, President can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> 